Welcome back. I was looking at my porch and I found a thing. This is a thing that was on my porch and I forgot about this thing. Somebody gave me some goji berry cuttings. I actually think it was, uh, might have been Sam from Scrubland Farm. And I, I stuck them in a bag, right? I, not been opened yet. Unboxing, unbagging, ungrocery bagging. So um, I stuck these cuttings in like two or three months ago and stuck them in a the soil and covered them with a bag. And look, they lived. That's the bag method. Like, you, you cover it so the moisture stays in, and you can even use a grocery bag. And that is so simple. Free plants for everyone. Get my book. It has been a busy, rainy, busy, and rainy week. Uh, I've been a little, I've been a little preoccupied, as you can see here. I've got some stuff going on. Now I've collected some plants uh, since I moved here in September. Many of them just to plant out in the yard, many of them for other people. But I, I've realized um, the desire to build a plant nursery is always alive inside of me. And I'm doing it. I'm doing it again. I'm starting a plant nursery. Now I had a plant nursery in Florida and a couple of years ago I wrote a book on starting your own home-based plant nursery, how I had a little patch of nursery space in my backyard and I grew a lot of plants and was successful with it, did not get into debt, and I had a, like a regular little income off of it. So I've decided to do that again, and I figured I would just show you guys, since I've talked about it in Free Plants for Everyone, I've talked about it in Grow or Die, I've talked about it in multiple books, and in the home-based plant nursery book, how to, have, how to start a little plant nursery, not even necessarily for commercial purposes, but how to have a little spot where you can propagate and make your own plants and save money and to do it on a shoestring. You don't have to have some big commercial thing. So let me show you what I'm doing right here. Since I'm doing it anyways, you might as well see. So the first thing I did was buy a roll of this stuff. This is DeWitt Sunbelt. Landscape fabric, nursery fabric. It's it's a woven plastic material that lasts a really long time. It allows water to pass through, so it doesn't pool up on top of it and make it really slippery and dangerous. Um, but it also keeps weeds from coming up from underneath. So this area that I'm on right now, where I have put my plant nursery, I, I got some sand and I threw it down here and we raked it all out until it was moderately even. You don't want a real lumpy area. But you can, put, you can cut your grass and put this stuff over a patch of grass and it'll work. It's just, if you've got it really nice and even to begin with, it makes for a nicer space to work. So you put this stuff down on the ground, but as you see, the ends of it will fray. You can fix that by, uh, by melting the end of it, or you can do it a really simple way. You, know, you cut it with a razor blade, and you tip it under like that, fold it, and then these are called landscape staples. Take these landscape staples, put one at the corner there, pop, 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 hammer it down all the way flush into the ground, and you go right down the row. And then you can pull the fabric taut against that and then work your way down the sides and work your way down the other end, just so it doesn't go anywhere. I've got staples all through this area. Just for this, uh, these three here, I think I used up about 45 staples to do this little patch, which is only a 12 foot by maybe 30 foot space. Another thing that is really useful, especially if you're gonna be dealing with trees, is to have a place where you can tie a line that you could tie the trees to, or you just have a rail that goes along that you could tie the trees to. These trees can now all be tied off so they don't get blown over in the wind. You'll find that, that trees get overbalanced really easily and blow over. Now at my old nursery in Florida, um, I had a ratcheted seal cable. I, stu I stuck two posts at the ends, put some concrete at the bottom of the posts, and then I put a ratchet at one side and a tie off at the other and ratcheted it until I had this really tight steel cable that wasn't gonna go anywhere. And then I would put a little, put a little piece of um, old hose or something along it and 
tie the trees off to it. You gotta be careful you don't wear through the trees when you do it. But here, I had some T-posts. So I took a T-post and one of my kids tied a line off so now we have something to support the trees just for now. I may come up with a better system later and sink some poles. But uh, kind of like one of those weekend warrior projects. What have we got in the shed? That's what we're gonna use. So that was that was two, two of these T-posts were laying around and there was this piece of free rope. So that's enough to keep the trees from blowing over for now. Another thing that's really nice to have for your little backyard plant nursery are some pots and potting soil. I mean, that should go without saying, but you can get potting soil in bags. Uh, like Ace sells potting soil for like four bucks a bag. It's cheaper than usually what you get. The miracle Grow stuff is kind of expensive. Um, it's really common everywhere. So if you could buy some cheap potting soil, you can also buy a little bit of that miracle Grow potting soil and mix both of them, and that way you have a combination in case the cheap potting soil you got is really, really dead. At least you have some of that nice miracle Grow soil. Now, I would rather go completely organic, uh, and sometimes you'll have luck talking to landscape and nursery suppliers, and you can get them to drop off a big load. I have not found a place anywhere near me that can drop off a big load of potting soil yet, but it's definitely on the list. So if you've got a spot where you can have potting soil dropped, hopefully not on top of your grass. Like if it can be dropped on some, you know, even old sheets of tin or even on some nursery fabric or whatever so you can scrape it up there and it doesn't pick up weeds and the grass doesn't grow through it and it doesn't wash away and you can throw a tarp over it, that's really ideal. But uh, for now, I'm just going with the, uh, the bag stuff and then I'm going to be rapidly trying to produce my own with some biochar and rotten wood and all the stuff that I can get, but hey, I need to get started, so there we go. Another thing that's really nice is to have a potting area. That is a bench that's like right here, so you're not having to hunch over and work. I like to do a lot of my work on the ground. Like, I actually just like to squat on the ground or sit on the ground and work. I do almost everything on the ground, but most people are not like that and would rather work at something like right here. So if you have a workbench with a little covered area for when it's raining and you don't want to stand out in the rain, you can have your pots and everything up there and it also keeps the weed seeds and everything from being a problem because if you work on the ground and you've got weed seeds that are blowing around, they'll end up in your pots and then you're constantly weeding your plants out and that's not nice. As for pots, you can talk to all your friends. Anybody that's doing landscaping, even landscaping companies, you could say, hey, you got any old pots? I actually lucked out and I found a whole ton of pots that had been dumped in a ditch on a piece of property that a friend of mine was leasing. Somebody had come by and thrown all of their old landscaping pots down there into this little ravine, and I, I picked up dozens of pots. But I've also bought pots uh, from Greenhouse Megastore, that's a good supplier, and I have, uh, I bought out another guy's nursery once and took tons and tons of old pots. Pots are an expense. You're gonna spend like 50 cents to a buck per pot, depending on the pot usually, and you buy them in stacks and it's not that expensive but um, you don't want to get the really cheap ones that are going to give up. You want ones that can actually sit out for a while and be used. And I think it's a great thing if you could just kind of go around and ask everybody, you got any extra pots? You want to get rid of those? Hey, you trade me 10 pots, I'll give you a free plant. You know, something like that. But just having some pots and having your potting soil in a wheelbarrow is really nice. It's easy to mix in a wheelbarrow. It's easy to work like this. And it's, you know, a wheelbarrow is probably something you've got around already. So I like to do this. Um, mix my potting soil up in a wheelbarrow and I'll sift rotten wood. I'll throw in different bags and then I can just, here we go. I'm gonna pot up something right now and it's easy and the soil falls back into here where I can use it again. It's nice not to have it falling all over the ground, you know. You've got a contained system and that's the way a good potting bench is supposed to work. One day we may actually build one. Maybe on the side of this greenhouse thing. Right there. That would be kind of awesome. So you can see here I've got Seedlings started up. These are pomegranate seedlings. Pomegranates are really easy. They're gonna make good pomegranates, but they're gonna be surprise pomegranates because you don't know exactly what they'll be. We've got some little bananas here. This is a Cavendish. And then we've got some truly tiny bananas here, which is an itty bitty variety. It's easy to keep in a pot. Then I've got some black locusts that are gonna be going in the food forest. I got some Osage oranges that I started. Osage orange is a very useful tree got some little lemongrass that when they grow up and clump out they'd be ready to go. This is a creeping raspberry. We've got succulents here. We've got uh, 
some sad looking longevity spinach that's coming on from cuttings. All this stuff is getting propagated right now and growing up either for the food forest or maybe some of it will eventually be for sale. Here, goji berry, which is not particularly happy. <laughs> you know, all this stuff is like, as you're propagating, you know, you've got your area for the, for the propagating stuff. Got some um, gumi berry relatives here and that uh, mulberry is coming in and then mice or raspberry and just all kinds of stuff. As you see, there's, there's just bits and pieces. And then, you know, when you've got the nursery area, you can use it to start things for your garden. Like, I've got all of these tomatoes right here. These need to get planted out because they're getting ridiculous. And then there's some moringas here, which will get planted up and potted out. And then some of the plants are just like big mother plants that we like for ourselves. Like this is a rescue citrus. This poor citrus was really beat and unhappy and you can see how the leaves look horrible. But you see the new growth here. We fed it up. It's been potted up. It was in a tiny little pot for some years. Now it's starting to grow and recover and eventually, you know, it'll get planted out somewhere. But I've got bits and pieces scattered all over here that will all be later used for either propagated material or they'll be grown up and stuck into things. But this is not the stuff that the public is is going to see. When you when you're you're going to set up and go sell somewhere, you take the really good looking stuff. You don't take anything that looks like eh, I don't know if I like that. No, it better be like really, really good. So you see this stuff and it's like, oh, those leaves don't look particularly good or that thing looks like it's it's too small for its pot or whatever. None of that stuff goes out of the nursery. You want to like put your best foot forward. So if I was like, hey, I could, I could take that one. That one looks pretty good. That's a pretty looking tree. Something's gnawing on it. You know, I might be like, well, this leaf's got a hole in it. Maybe I'll give it a little longer or maybe I'll just sell it the way it is and say, look at that, it's organic. But it's a good looking tree. It's not perfect. It's not, it's not as perfect as you want. Here we go. Here's a blackberry. This blackberry could be thicker. In a few more weeks, this is gonna be taller and prettier. It's just gotten fed again. I have a little insect damage here. So you might go along and go, that section right there, that's coming off. That's not pretty. You know, get rid of any insect damage. Make sure you don't have any eggs of any weird things on it or uh, mealy bugs or any of that kind of stuff. It's gotta look pretty. And a lot of this stuff has just been sitting around waiting for me to plant it. And it's not the kind of thing that is, would be good to actually take out. You're gonna have to figure out what your tolerances are there. Are you doing it like the garage sale way where you just throw everything out and a few bucks, two bucks, three bucks, or do you wanna make it look really, really pretty? I'd rather make it look really pretty as much as I can in a mostly organic fashion where you don't have to spray things. But great thing about the nursery, you can have trees like these figs here. I've been collecting different fig varieties. I've got a finger lime over here that I got from Sam at Scrubland Farms. I've got a Jabuticaba. Now some of these things here, I can grow them in great big pots and I keep them and they are a business expense because I have a nursery. So they're the mother plants. These are the things that I'm gonna propagate stuff off of maybe later. This Mysore raspberry. I'm getting this guy really nice and big and beautiful and then it'll get propagated out into smaller pots. And then, then your hobby, your plant hoarding. No, no, it's a business. It's not plant hoarding, it's a business now. Today's video has been brought to you by Cabbages. Cabbages, the flavor of spring. Cabbages. Available wherever brassicas are grown. One last trick here. You got a plant that dries out and doesn't look very happy, like the it's gotten hydrophobic. You can take a kiddie pool, stick the base of it in a kiddie pool, and it'll start to recover. So the soil got too dry. Well, stick the bottom of it in there. It'll soak up and that'll re resaturate the soil over the next day, and then you pull it out and stick it back in and that'll be fine. So whether you want to just have a little side income thing or if you're just trying to save a ton of money, you will save so much money by propagating your own plants. I mean, you can, you can, it's like coining money propagating your own plants. It's not even a matter of going out and selling them. It's a matter of not spending the money on things. You know, being able to propagate and grow out 
your mulberries and your raspberries and your blackberries for your gardens, being able to start your own tomato seedlings, all that kind of stuff. Having a little bit of space that you can do it in, even a, say a 10 foot by 10 foot space, that's your little nursery space, can save you, I, I bet, at least a thousand or more dollars a year in plants, because you can propagate out easily about $300 worth of plants in just a few minutes. You know what? Let me show you. I did that this morning. You see all these little plants right here? This is a really shady spot because these plants don't have full root development yet. These just got divided this morning. Each one of these pots has chunks of raspberry vines, canes, in them that had roots. So there's, there's some root cuttings and there's some shoots in there. I took a couple of heritage raspberry plants. You can see my daughter very nicely labeled them all for us. And I divided them into pieces and potted them all up. Now I think I paid like 10 or 15, 12 or 15 bucks or something like that for the original one. Maybe 15 bucks for the original raspberry plants. Grew them up for a bit. I didn't get them planted out in my garden and I thought, you know what? I'm gonna duplicate them because we had our first raspberry the other day and it was delicious. Really nice and sweet. It fruited really well. They've been growing good in the garden, so I said, okay, this variety is a keeper. Let's duplicate it. So we duplicated it, but this is two plants. This is one of the mother plants. This is one of the original ones we divided these pieces off of. And divide, 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 divide. You can see all these little, these little canes coming up out of the ground. All of these will be thriving, beautiful, big raspberry plants in just a couple of months. And so if you were to say, well, these, these 20 plants here, this is like 300 bucks. And it took about 45 minutes of dividing and potting, maybe. And this is not very much space right here underneath these trees. And I'm keeping them in the shade while the roots develop because of course we tore the root ball to bits doing this. So it's, it's a nice way to save a little bit of money. Even if you never turned around and sold a single thing, you can give them away, you can trade them, and you can plant your own yard and save a bundle that way. So I love the, I love the backyard nursery thing, and it's about time for me to start again. I don't have a license or any of that yet, but eventually I will. I'm working on it. But right now I figured I'd take you and show you what the space looks like and give you a few pointers. And of course, if you wanna see how I made a successful backyard plant nursery in Florida, check out the book. I'll put a link below and I'll also put a link to my book, Free Plants for Everyone, The Good Guide to Plant Propagation, because it really is like coining money or even better, coining food. Catch y'all next time. And until then, may your thumbs always be green. I buried my rabbit beneath the cherry tree One fine afternoon Someday I know that we'll meet again on a fruit salad spoon.